my name is Dion Parker, but I go by D. And so if you all, I mean, because you go, yeah, if, especially if you read the book, you got to know me real, real well, because all my business is in the book. I'm the swagologist, and um, the book is called Girl, Get Your Swag Back. And I am also the founder of the Swag University. And swag, if you don't know, is self-confidence, walk with God, attitude of gratitude, and God-given gifts and talents. And boy, I tell you, woo, when God set me down to write this book, he took a lot out of this one. A Amen. Lot. I mean, he pressed upon this one and, and took a lot of band-aids off that I had had and Really, my story is in there, and you'll be able to discover who I who I was and who I am now. Um, just and just just loving the relationship that I have with the Lord. But I'm telling you, those of you who you know, again, thinking about getting your swag back, our, we can lose our swag. Any of those areas: self confidence, walk with God, attitude of gratitude, and God giving gifts and talents, either through trauma or drama. And I say, I mean, day to day, I work on my swag day today it is never a final journey my wow. swag <laughs> i'm just telling y'all because sometimes your self-confidence takes a hit sometimes your walk with god takes a hit your attitude looks like Ooh, we uh, i don't want to be on the other side of you with that attitude and sometimes we walk away from our gifts and talents where we really should be striding in those gifts and talents so that's what girl get your swag back is and this is the swag takeover so the swag takeover let me tell y'all how this works this is phenomenal so I, I hunt for women that are phenomenal, oh. that are out there doing the thing. I mean, that are just that jaw-dropping, phenomenal women that are out there encouraging, doing stuff that, that just makes you just want to stand up and holler. And that's what the swag takeover is all about. So I, I'm not, to me, I feel like there's more than just my voice. And so... I don't know it all. And so I invite other women who do have other things to say besides what I have to say. And so I want them to come over and take over my platform. And the way that they do this is that they take over either one of the four letters of swag. So if they want to align with self-confidence and they've got a message to do that, they come in and take over and, and do their message around that or any of the other one letters in swag. Amen. So again, I, I believe in sharing a platform because I believe we are all connected. We don't all, I don't know it all. Nobody knows it all. And mm -hmm. to me, if I am walking in my gifts and talents and upright, why not pull another sister who's walking in hers? So mm -hmm. I hope y'all are inspired because this woman right here, y'all, oh. let me just say, oh, <laughs> I... Ah, uh, I this is this is so I don't ever believe in mistakes or randomness because I know this is a holy hookup. Y'all, I found Mrs. Delisa New Williams on their Facebook site I was invited to called The Wise Hive. Mm -hmm. And I was so intrigued by her. I started looking at a, a video. She did a Facebook live video, and the first thing that she just I mean that captured me was her realness. It was oh. her authenticity, just the way that she brought a message. And then she, I mean, held my attention from the beginning to the end. And by the time that I was girl, done watching her video, <laughs> girls, and wait, and then she wrote this letter. I mean, she talks about this. It's a prayer. Actually, it was a prayer about, oof, right, wait, I'm just saying, <laughs> about before you have, have yeah, relations with your relations. husband. Yes, your relations, relations with your husband. <laughs> I mean, she wrote this prayer. I was like, okay, I have to, I have to reach out to this woman. And so I began to reach out to her and just chat. And I was trying to get her on. I was trying to figure out who, where, how, what we're gonna do. But she, she's here. She is Amen. here. If Amen. you hadn't read her, look at her, Lisa. <laughs> And y'all, if y'all haven't read her bio, let me just read a little bit to you because she's going to expound on this. Delisa is a wife, a mother of four, and, and she'll tell you her news, but authorpreneur, cutting edge speaker, and media personality. She's a three-peat, y'all, three-peat author. Uh, and her new book is No Longer Am I a Baby Mama. Um, it's a spiritual self-help book for single mothers and co-parents of blended families. In addition to all of that, 
Um, she's a mom. Of, I can't even do this. Momager. Is that what she said? Momager. momager. Yes, a yes, momager. momager. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Tisha yes. premarital. Sex, uh, excuse me, I was going to say sex classes, but premarital classes. Oh, wait, hold on. You might be. <laughs> might be. I've talked about it with my husband. I said, Just hey, saying. Help the people out. <laughs> <laughs> that might be. I'm just saying, help us out now. Look at here. Premarital classes with her husband. She's also a media personality for the up and coming talk show, The Wives Talk. Delisa is a woman whose calling is to help set the people free, set them free, Delisa, from any fears and ambitions that prohibits them from walking in purpose and obtaining their goals. She also loves connecting and changing the world. I love this with other dope women. And y'all, yeah. You don't, <laughs> so you don't. I, I'm love. just. <laughs> so here she it. is. She is. And Miss Lisa, are you ready to take over? Yes, I'm ready to take over. So thank you so much, D, for that. Seriously, thank you so, so, so much for opening up your platform for other women because you're so right. Like it takes a multitude of us. You know, when we come together, we shine so bright. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you, you got light on you, but baby, when you got light and I got light, da -da -da, girl, we blinding the whole world together, right? But I'm I'm so glad that you know that, that you're 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 able to see that, you know, seriously. So thank you. And I just continue to pray for you and pray for your platform to just expand from, from this and mm -hmm. that you know you go from this, honey, to to networks and radio shows and everything else and i just pray that all the doors open Amen. for you seriously in jesus name like really thank, thank you man thank so, you so when when my sister did this when kristen did this a while ago right and she was telling me about it instantly i was like you know what i don't know what letter i'm gonna do but i'm gonna just pick w i always said that i was like i'm gonna pick w so when i found out what w was i was like oh okay walk with god all right that that seems pretty cool because my book that you were just talking about no longer my baby mama it really talks about walking with god and just basically creating your own relationship having your own relationship with god and forgetting about what happened in the past between you and the baby daddy what hurt and bitterness may came from it and you just need to focus on you as a mother you as a woman of god and walk in your own purpose so i was like cool this is great but then here you go d you hit the word restore i said wait a minute hold on god I ain't told her nothing about no god dog gonna restore. I ain't said nothing about no restore. Where she get restored from, right? But I'm telling you, I love God. Like, for real, for real, I do. And I'm not making this up, y'all. Seriously, I really do. Because when you truly submit unto him in everything, he will govern your paths. She said restore, and I was like stuck. I was like, I don't. So I'm like, God, it was in the midnight hour. <clears throat> this was like maybe last week or whatever. You were still out of town. And I'm like, God, what do you want me to talk about? And I don't know about y'all, but God talked to me in the midnight hour. Like, I'll wake up in the middle of the night, and he'll be just as talking. I'll be like, it's 4.30. I still got like an hour and a half to get these kids ready. Like, you couldn't come to me at 6. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he don't have no respect. No, that's what he said. He no respect person, right? He don't care, right? So... 4 30 in the morning he hit me and he was like restore and he broke it down like this and so i had to write it out for you all restore rest or remain empty rest or, or remain empty do you see that i didn't come up with this okay he did okay because let me tell you something when I think of restore, I'm like, oh, you know, you restore, you restore old cars and just mm -mm. rest or your butt going to remain empty. Okay. I put the B in there. Your butt going to remain empty. <clears throat> and so honestly, when D was talking about my good news <clears throat> in December, me and my husband, we found out that we are pregnant, right? With our fifth child. Yay. We're a blended family. And so during that time, and I'm going to be, I'm going to be very transparent with you. Um, during this time, 
I really was like depressed for like maybe 48 hours. I don't be depressed long. You know, when you, I was like, I ain't gonna, depression ain't gonna last on me long. Thank you, Keisha. But um, I was really kind of depressed because I was like, oh my God, 2018 is everything. You know, at the end of the year, you, you saw all these memes popping up and everybody was posting 2018, your year, you gonna blow up. Everything gonna be great. And I'm like, 2018, I'm gonna be fat and I'm gonna be pregnant and I ain't gonna be able to do nothing. That's just not right. It's just not right. Why would you do this to me, God? I just don't understand. I got a new book coming out, The Wives, my kids. We thinking about moving, you know, so my children's career can bloom. I'm like, oh my God, why would you do this? And he was like, rest. You are going to rest. And I was like, but I don't want to rest because in my mind, rest meant lazy. When you're resting, let me tell you something. I don't take any naps. I hate naps. My husband would take a nap and I'd be like, you know what, while you was napping, I built the Great Wall of China. Okay, while you was over there napping, I built a whole house. The kids then went to dance class. I done did somebody hair. I done cooked clean for you, you over here sleep. <laughs> you know what I'm so I hate naps. And it comes from how I was raised. My grandmother would be like, by the time my husband came home from work, I painted the whole house. You know what I'm saying? So that's just in my bloodline. And so God kept saying, rest, rest. And I was just like, I don't even know how to rest because when you're building an empire and you're an entrepreneur, or if you're just starting anything from the ground running, you know that you have sleepless nights. You're up trying to uh, build your, yourself on social media, which is a lot of guy dog on work. <clears throat> you got to be on Twitter, uh, pin interest and uh, get, get this Facebook. And I mean, it's just too much going on. <clears throat> and then I have my kids careers. And then even if you're a parent, even if they don't have a career yet, they're still in activities and you still have to be a mom and then you have to be a wife and you have to be a friend and a daughter and a sister. And it's just a lot of time. But when you're building that baby and that business, it really takes a lot out of you. And so your thoughts become that business. Your desires become that business. Everything you watch on TV, you're like, okay, I'm thinking of what can I use this for my business? You know, you, you never can turn it off you never can and so rest for me was like i don't even know what you're talking about god and so <clears throat> i literally had to go to the dictionary i was like i gotta figure out what restore means so one thing about delisa new williams that you will find out is i'm a receipt person okay i got to have some receipts <laughs> you know what I'm saying? i don't want to be the one talking to um I don't want to be the one talking about stuff that I haven't experienced or I don't know anything about. I like to have my facts together. You know what I'm saying? And so when I looked at the word restore, it was saying bring back. And it was saying that something that you reinstate, you bring back to a former condition, a place or a position. And I got to thinking about your relationship with God. And a lot of times, I use analogies when I'm, when I'm talking. And so when I think of my relationship with the Lord, I think of my relationship with my husband in a marriage or, or just a relationship with a close friend of what, or whatever. But if something has happened in your marriage or in that friendship, you want to restore it. You're trying to bring it back to its original state, right? You're trying to bring it back to what it once was. And with what it once was is that's what God is saying with us, with restore. I'm trying to restore you to what it once was in the beginning, not the beginning of Thursday, March 1st, but in the beginning of time. Okay. Restoration. Um, I got to thinking about, you know, like if there was some dishonesty between me and my husband, or if there was, you know, we got a tool, we was arguing and all that other stuff, you know, we have to, we have to figure out how to restore that. We got to work on that. We got to figure out how to bring this marriage back to what it once was. And the one thing that we do not do, or we need to work on is it's going to take time and it's going to take trust, right? 
So the thing about being restored and how it takes time is that usually as, as with his doors, we, we act like we don't have time. Everything is just, you know, out of, everything is just like, time, I ain't got time to do nothing. You know, I wake up in the morning, I get the kids together, I ain't got time, I ain't got time to pray, I ain't got time to eat. Think about how many times you have forgotten to eat. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a witness of that. I'm like, oh my God, that's why my head hurt. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's why I'm, I'm losing weight or, you know, I got an attitude. Okay, you really got an attitude because you realize you ain't ate nothing. You hungry. <laughs> so, I mean, um, but we don't give that time to God, right? And so I had to think about this, right? Because I talked to a lot of wives in waiting. and Dee was saying that, you know, we have this wife have group and it, it's not just wives, but it's wives in waiting as well. And I particularly love talking to my wives in waiting because um, when I was single, I was a single mother and I really worked on preparation with the Lord on how to prepare me as a wife. You know what I'm saying? I, and so I really take that, the wives and wait into heart for me. And so when I talk to the wives and wait, and I'm like, think about it. When you're in a relationship, you give so much time to a man. So much time to a man. You forget that man, and man say this to you, it's done, sealed. But when it comes down to God, we like, listen here, God. I'd have been abstinent for 30 days. <laughs> I've been tagged in for two months. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We come at him really hard. And, and, and God had to help me with this because I had to think about my husband. Like my husband really had a horrible addiction to video games. Oh my God, it was, it was the worst. It was really, really bad. He would play video games all day long. Wouldn't eat, wouldn't do anything. I would come in the house, kids would be like, we hungry. We hungry. <laughs> Girl, I'll be like, but your daddy was here. They ain't said they was hungry. How could they say they was hungry? You was playing video games, right? And so this was something, you know, and I would talk to other wives. I was like, Girl, yeah, my husband played video games too, you know. But I refused to let that be a, a problem that I was going to accept in my marriage. And so we argued. I Pray, y'all. I put oil on that PS4. Y'all know nothing about me. Y'all know nothing about me, baby. I put oil on that PS4. I put oil on the TV, honey. Me and my friend was over there shining. Girl, y'all know nothing about y'all know nothing about God, baby. Y'all don't know nothing about God. That's what I'm trying to tell you. So that's why when wives tell me that they didn't did this, they didn't. Did, no, you ain't did everything. Okay, you better get some of that oil together. Okay, and so. I did this and honestly, I would feel kind of bad because it wasn't happening fast enough for me. Oh my God, I didn't fast it. I didn't did this, I didn't did that. But I still had to work on patience within myself. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm glad to say today, eight years me and my husband will be married this year. He has not played the video game for like two years really the way he used to yes and so he he just gave it up he don't even let our boys play with it like that he's like get off of it y'all look silly i'm like what you said that but that's because it was time you know but we don't give that same time to god we like god i've been doing this business for two years and i should have been here and then we watching people on social media and we seeing what they doing we seeing people on tv and then we get anxious and we don't rest in what god is doing so that thing right there is time we have to have time for God, right? We have to spend time with God, but we also have to give God time to do what it is that he's doing because he's perfect. We're not. He knows the perfect ways. We don't know the perfect ways. It says his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. So yeah, you may think that you're going to get it on this day, but he got a whole nother thing around the corner waiting on you. You just got to do what? Next trust God. So now we covered time. So now the next thing is, um, is trusting God. But first I want to say that it's not a race. Sorry, my, my notes are down here because my other computer is, uh, is broke because I usually have my notes up here, but it's not a race. And we, we got to stop thinking that it's a race with God. Social media is so serious. I really, sometimes I hate social media. I tell my friends this all the time. It can really be a blessing and a curse because 
we look at people and, and we see, oh man, it happened like this for them and this, you know, and one thing we don't know the backstory, you know, that's number one, but it's not a race with God. You know what I'm saying? We got to stop being in competition. You know what I'm saying? We got to stop that. We de definitely, that's even in my book. We got to submit to the process, but we got to, and we have to trust it as well, faith. You got to submit to it as well as trust. So when you're restoring a relationship with anyone, your husband, your loved one, you got to put your trust and faith into that person so that you can rebuild it. Because if there was some, um, let's just say there was an affair that happened, right? And I mean, you and, and your husband comes to you and he say, you know, I'm sorry or whatever the case may be. And if you still got that in the back of your head, and I've actually talked to wives who, um, can you hear me? Oh, okay. I've actually talked to wives, you know, who have dealt with this. And the husband, me and my husband have counseled them. And the husband's like, she just won't get over it. Like, I apologize. I said, sorry. You know, I did this. I did that. And the wife is still like, mm, 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 mm. And I'm not saying that, you know, there might not be any validity for her, mm, 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 but we got to work. How are we going to rebuild if we still walking around here holding on to it? And so sometimes we do that with God. Well, you know what? I had prayed for that and you didn't do that when I asked for it. Or I started this business and it ain't blow up like I thought it was, you know, come on now, because I've done it. I've done it to the Lord. I said, what? I'm, I'm still here? <laughs> yes, 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 yes. I'm trying not to run around the room and interrupt <laughs> what you got to say, but I know exactly what you are talking about. Yes. yes. Oh, you, my goodness. You feel like, you feel like, um, you know, I'm still here. You know what I'm saying? So where's the trust? You know, and then you, and you come to God with that, like, somebody give you a word, you'd be like, mm. Yeah, I heard that before. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, the prophet looking at you like, well, dang, you know, like, you know, because you got some some issues, you know, that you kind of gotta let go or whatever. And so when we have to, when we when we restore our walk and we bring it back to our original condition, we gotta end the race that we're on. But what does that look like? So remember I was saying back to your original condition, right? Back to what it used to look like, back to what it was. And so God said, Adam and Eve, that's the beginning. That's what it was. They didn't have a care in the world. They didn't have any bills. They didn't have to go to work. They were so free in this. and. They was just walking around, frolicking in the garden, all naked and free. And God walked. And so, but today we running, we running, we sprinting, we doing everything right. But they were so free in this. And God is saying, I want to bring you back to that place of rest. I want to bring you back to where you used to just trust me. You used to listen to me. You used to believe in what I said despite of what anybody else said to you, despite the serpent coming to you trying to feed you some garbage, you believed me. And I want to bring you back to that place. And so how do you do that? How do you get back to that place? Because I had to ask her, I was like, now you might have to give me some tangible because we just can't keep talking in circles. He said, it's a friendship. I was like, a friendship, God? He said, yeah, it's a friendship. It's a friendship between me and you. That's good. That's good. And so then, then he gave me John 15 and 15. It says, so Jesus told us that he confides his kingdom purposes to his friends. Now, in this version, it says, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything I learned from my father, I have made known to you. I was like, wow, God, that's really deep to be your friend. But it sounds so simple, sisters. I promise you it do. But I had to ask God and God was like, what type of friend is God to you? And what type of friend are you to God? Because let's be honest, sisters. Let, come on, let's just tell the truth. 
How can you be a friend to God and you ain't even got no friends yourself? So many times in the wife have, and I have met so many wives. I just met a wife this past Sunday at a baby shower. And she was like, I was just telling my husband, I don't have no friends. I hear this all the time, ladies. I don't have no friends. I don't have no friends. But the Bible says, you know, how can you show yourself, the way you show yourself, the way you get friends, how you show yourself friendly. And so how can we have a relationship based on friendship with God if we don't even know how to be friends first? I mean, seriously, God is saying this rest word, I'm telling y'all, it, it blew me. It was not the restore that I thought it was, y'all. It really took me back to the basics. And you will be so amazed how many people want to have a walk with God and they don't even know God. How can you walk with somebody that you don't even know, that you have questions on whether you believe in? I'm not lying to y'all. I know people today go to church, serve in ministry. Do you hear me? And recently just told my husband, I don't even know if I believe in Jesus. What? What? Are you serious to me? Serious to me. Yes, I said that. Are you serious to me? You know what I'm saying? So how can we want something from God and we don't even know who he is? Come on, y'all. We got to go back to the basics one-on-one. -on -one. Who is God? Who is Jesus? The son. He came to earth. He died on the cross. You know, you got to go through the whole thing over and over again and get people to have faith first before they can have a walk next. Come on. So here's the thing. Like I told you, I do my research. And so it was this woman, she was on ABC News. Actually, I read a blog. I wish I could, I was able to find this blog. And it was really, it was written by a sister too. But she was breaking down the types of friendships that there are. There were so many different friendships. And, but I couldn't find it. So, but I did find this one lady. She had wrote this, this, um, I don't know, was it a newspaper or whatever, but it was featured on ABC 7 News. And so what they were, what she was saying was there's six types of friendships. This is interesting. It was like the first one was pre-acquaintance. Those are people that you just know by name, right? Those are people, and you know them, they just be like, you know, oh yeah, I know so-and-so. And that's how some people do God. I, you know, I know God, but you know, I mean, I don't know everything about him, but you know, I know he the creator. That's what they say, you know. And so then you got acquaintance level one. Those are your casual coworkers, your colleagues, the people that you run into, but you don't make plans with. Sometimes we do that with God, right? Hey, God, what's up? That, let me tell you what that's like. Let me give you an example. And I ain't going to put on blast, right, because I love her so much, but <laughs> it's this lady that I love so much. She been getting a daily word subscription as long as I've been alive, right? But I have never seen the manifestation of Christ on her life. Do you understand me? She read that daily word, that little book. I mean, get the and, and would be mad if she missed her day. I miss my daily word. I miss my daily word. But I don't even see God on your life, right? That's that's that coworker. That's that relationship with God. We we do our little five minute prayer or whatever. But you don't, can't nobody even tell that you even a Christian. Don't nobody even know that you you ain't never said a prayer. We ain't never heard you pray before. We ain't never heard you say nothing. Now all of a sudden you missing out. On, I got five minute prayer. <laughs> Come on, girl. So. Then you got your level two ones. Those are the ones that you've known for a while, but you only see in groups, right? Those ones, that, that's when you go to God just on Sunday. Sunday, hallelujah. And then Monday through Saturday, I I don't know your name. You know what I'm saying? That's a, and I swear, baby, you know what I'm saying? That, but Sunday, but Monday through Saturday, nothing at all, right? That's that's that level two. Now, these are still acquaintances, right? Pre-acquaintance, level one acquaintance, level two acquaintance. Then she goes to um, level three or pre-friends. And she said, those are the people that you care deeply about and you feel strongly connected to, but you don't see on a regular basis, right? So, you know, you got people that's like, I love God. You know, a oh girl, honey, I got a testimony of what you did to me in 1985. He is everything to me. 
you you got a testimony from 1985 he ain't did nothing for you this week <laughs> you know what i'm saying like you love him and you care about him but you don't you don't spend time with him on a regular basis you know god because y'all have been through some things but that relationship piece is just not there he 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 he's sitting there waiting on you and you just drive right on by and so then finally she says a friend finally we get to a friend that's mutual feelings of love and then she says people that you care immensely about um people that you you care about their thoughts their ideas their elations their their fears that's when you care about god that's when you do something and you really want to cut somebody out but you know you can't do it because you like god is gonna get me and i don't want to hurt my father right seriously or when um you know it's something that you 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 really don't want to do but he telling you to do it but you're doing it because you love him so much and you like god i don't even want to do this i'm like i don't even want to give this person this five dollars because they already owe me some money but i'm gonna do it because i know you told me to that's love um when you can be honest with god you know I, I don't sugarcoat nothing with the lord you know i tell him everything if i'm mad i'm mad if i'm happy i'm happy if i'm jealous i'm jealous you know if if i feel embarrassed i'm embarrassed you know i don't i don't try to put on no pretty perfect nothing with the lord at all you know what i'm saying and so that's friends but it's mutual god is honest with you he wrote a whole book for you and then you are honest with him so the relationship is mutual that's a friendship but we got to understand how to be friends first with god and that's what god is saying i want to be your friend when him and adam was in the beginning it was just them two and they were friends he loved adam why do you think he was so hurt when it happened who told you you were naked i i created you i allowed you to to name all the animals adam i made you king over everything and then this is how you did me he was so hurt but then he loved us again and sent his son jesus down to be crucified so that we can be restored everything can be restored that's why jesus is here he's here so everything can go back to the beginning it can go back to its original state so we have to rest in knowing that god is god we have to rest in knowing that it's not by our might it's not our ways it's not what we want but we gotta rest in knowing that it's all about him because if we don't we're gonna remain empty that's it we're gonna definitely remain empty my goodness so, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, no i'm just and i'm i just want to be honest with y'all and i've heard so many people say this to me like man when i'm talking passes you'll hear them say man when i'm talking to you you know i'm talking to myself and things and i never could understand that but in this god was really talking to me as well because as a as a woman we do everything right we take care of them him her and everybody else in between but who's taking care of us and god is like i want to take care of you but you don't want me to take care of you because you don't even trust that i'm gonna do my job come on this thing really broke me down like seriously broke me down when i was going through it and i was studying it and and what i want to let everyone know is to get your relationship to get your walk back to restore it it's not hard god is he pursues us in every single way every single way um when they were in the garden of eden they were walking around you know with the figs and stuff they didn't stumble upon god god walked up on them he was still pursuing them in their sin in their shame in their embarrassment 
he still was like, what's going on? And that's what he's saying to us right now. What's going on, daughter? I'm here. I'm so here for you. Like, don't turn your back on me. I love you. But guess what? If we continue, we're going to be disobedient and then we're going to remain empty. So let restore on this day, it's going to mean something totally different. And we got to restore our relationship with the Lord and we got to allow him to fill us up. We got to allow God to pursue us and fill us up. And, 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 I, and honestly, it might take some work. I'm going to be honest with you because I have had to pray and be like, Lord, show me what rest look like. If you don't know what rest is, don't act like you do. Come before the Lord and say, God, I have been doing this so wrong. I have been doing this all by myself, all in my mind, in my thoughts. Show me what rest looks like because I don't know. And so I had to acknowledge and accept my pregnancy and take it in. Because when I was pregnant with my other kids, I was doing this and doing this. And I even came to the doctor. I was like, why can't I work? My back hurt. I'm taking three hour naps. What's wrong? She was like, girl, you better sit down and chill. And I was like, oh my God. And it might not be forever, Delisa. It's gonna be just for a season. But in this season, God wants you to rest, sister. He wants you, he wants to pick you up, put you in his bosom, hold you dear, and just rest. It's not going to be hard. You're not going to toil. He don't want you to labor. Seek God and ask him for the multiple streams of income. Seek God and ask him, how can your daughters and your kids and your family get here and there? Ask him to open up the doors and connect you with the right people because it's going to happen. But you got to be open to knowing that this thing is bigger than just you. You got a heavenly father that you got to trust. So on this day, one is spending time with God, having time with God, trusting God, and building that friendship with God. If you talk on the phone with your girlfriend more than, than you talk to Jesus, that's a problem. That's a problem. If we can't come to God first before we call that girlfriend on the phone and say yada, 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 that's a problem. I have to check myself with that. Sometimes if they don't pick up the phone, I'm like, okay, God, you didn't shut them down because you want me to talk to you first because you already know. Like, I'm just being honest with you. He will give you signs, but we have to take it, right? And so that don't mean keep calling, keep calling. That means, okay, you want to talk to me. You, you want you, you want to spend some time with me. I remember when I was single, I used to go to the show with God, me, ticket for one, and I had me a seat right there, and it would be me and God at the show. Honestly, he wants you back. He wants you back. He's seen your tears. He's seen you crying. He's seen you hurting, you sweating, you upset. Come on back, baby. So in this time, we're going to let God fill us up in Jesus' name. And that is how you restore your walk with God. <laughs> Girl. Hey, Jesus. Amen for Jesus. Amen for Jesus. Amen for Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> you know what? Come on now. Oh, my goodness. I Amen. always, I have to. I have to put myself on mute because I will run and I'm, I'm trying not to uh, be disruptive and amen and amen and amen and more amen. <laughs> they said, I, saw you, I saw your lips, girl. I saw your lips. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I love God. I love Oh my God. goodness. Love that and was an on time word. When he gave me this, y'all. Uh. Girl, I did mm. this in my in, in the sleep at four thirty more, and I was like, "This don't make no sense." I love it when he drops a word in our spirit like that, and it and sometimes he, he will change your word. You he said, will. 
I mean, uh, you you have said so much. I was trying to write in the chat room, and Faith is over here in the chat room blowing it up. She said, <laughs> she said, do Girl. so much and get nowhere because we need to be restored. When I tell you this word was for me, you have no idea. Oh, yes, man. yes, yes, Thank yes. You. Oh my God, you know, and that's what I wanted to say. You know, D, I, before we got on this, I'm like, you know what, God, God will have who He wants to have on here. Yes. And he, mm -hmm. you know, it's so amazing how he does that, you know, Agreed. Um, he said, if I can, if, if you faithful over a few things, I will make you ruler over many. Over and many. So, Come on. You, know, you do the same amazing thing. If it's one or two people in the group, if it was one to 2000 people. And, and I just, I was praying for whoever was on this before this, because I'm like, that's right. I know God. You that's right. my head open with this thing. So I know. That is right. That's they right. Got something coming for them in Jesus name. Oh, Faith said, I left my part-time job on Monday after much prayer because I was just tired. I was so stressed mm. with just those four hours a day. I told God I wanted to grow my business and work on my book. Come on. Oh, wow. I when love you start it. Walking in God's purpose, he opens door. And let me say yes, this. He does. Say. Let me say this. This book, this is testimony time. I truly believe in Come testimony. On. This was the first book that I was supposed to write, okay? I didn't write it. I didn't push it out because of fear. Mm. Mm. Um, during the time, I just didn't believe that it was true. I didn't yeah. believe that it was, it was just, I'm like, I need to go to school. I need to, I, I should have went to baby mama ology one-on-one -on -one class or something like, because, because I have my master's in business and I'm a person, I'm a student. That's why I come with the, you know, with the dictionary and the research yes. and, the and, stuff, and I'm a student. Mm -hmm. And when God was giving me what to write in this book, I was like, I kept trying to research it. And there was nothing on the internet. There wasn't a book that I could refer to. There mm -hmm. wasn't anything. And God mm -hmm. was like, so are you just going to trust me? Yes. I didn't. Yes. I came out with my children's book first. And it was little success. And then I just wrote this. Uh, this it, It's just high school compilation book. But this, this is the book that God originally told me to write. Mm -hmm. This is the book that now I'm talking about on Dion Parker's show. This is the book that I was just on a radio show talking about two days ago. And I was on another radio show talking about. It mm -hmm. was this book. Mm -hmm. I wasn't on the radio show talking mm -hmm. about my other books. It's this book. So mm -hmm. when you walk in God's purpose yes. and you are obedient to what he told you to do, believe trust he is going to open up doors that no man can shut do you understand me he does not want you to work no part-time job and you got girls and you a mother girl you got the raise purpose that's not god Amen. Amen. Write, that write that book and I, she said i've been running from my book for six wow. years come on come on i know that's right you know what let me say this the same thing that that delisa said you know when i think about when i sit down and i wrote swag first of all i had no intentions on writing a book at all there was wow. I, I i didn't set out to write a book i remember i was praying and i was asking god what my purpose was mm -hmm. and i was writing these little blogs and and i was writing them for just they were they were for me they were really for me and i was sending out to friends and family and that was it and that was really it and so i was getting ready to you write scared. another you was scared. I was scared I was scared and and I was and but I had no intentions of sitting down and writing this book and so when God dropped in my spirit that it was a book instead of a blog I was like really Lord and so I started writing and as I was writing the story of my testimony which which I knew was going to be hard for me because I had to go back in a place of pain and uncover all the stuff that I thought that I had healed from thought. Let me just say that that was totally, totally wrong. Um, I, I wasn't, but I, my fear was that if I go there, Lord, will you bring me back? Mm. And so I had to trust as you were talking about, I had to trust him. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
Because if and, if and if I trusted that he was my friend at that time, then I would have just said, okay, Lord, I'm gonna go ahead on and write this. But I had to literally sit down and think, this is for you. I had to just do it. And a lot of times it's fear, you know, in combination with, uh, with procrastination and perfection and all of this, you know, doubt and all of that. And, and all of that comes to, it, I mean, it, it's, it's self-sabotage. It's silent self-sabotage. But I tell you what, doubt and fear and all those other things, I mean, kill more dreams, success, just vision than it failure does. ever will. I, I will it say does. that. You, it don't have to be perfect, honey. It just has to be done. It just has to be done. Just yeah. have to be done. That's it. You can always go back and edit and rewrite. There's probably errors in my book right now, but okay. I, I had to stop and get it all. It, it was time. Push the button Let's and go. go. Yep. It, <laughs> it just has done. to be done. That's mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Delisa, you are amazing. Let oh, me just say this. You, and amen, Jesus. I was so blessed by everything that you just said and, and to understand that we need to rest, you know, and, and we fight against rest, especially those of us who are visionaries and creatives Ooh, and, you know, and, and entrepreneurs, right? Our minds just, shh, and I know that to be true for, for me. Back. I know that constantly. And so when God puts us, puts us in a place where you said, you know, we have no choice but to rest, we, we feel like it's time out. <laughs> Honey, got into a time out, oh, Lord. Honey, I get time out. Yeah. I'm here. <laughs> but it's only to, to, to your point, to me, it goes back to, like, to your point, is resting to restore me back to where I was. In order for me to continue to be multifaceted and to Come run, on. I have to rest. There is no way that I would be able to do all of the things that he has called me to do if I don't sit down somewhere and go rest. And go it's rest. just not going to, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen. I can't pour from empty. And that's what I do on a daily basis is pour into other people, but I can't pour from an empty cup. No, you cannot. No. It's a dangerous place to be, to try to pour from empty. And I'm, and I don't have the time for myself. I have not, sat and, and you know at his feet and to just be poured back God. into it. yeah that's that i thank you for blessing me with that word that was awesome Amen. oh i've been fasting with no this is faith she said been fasting with no meat and no sugar for lent and picked up my bible and started reading from the beginning again and i Amen. asked god to show me some things guide me in his ordained path connect me with people he wants me to connect with I'm telling you, Jesus. Yes. Amen. Yes, Amen. yes, yes. Amen. Amazing. Yay! Delisa is, um, I'm Delisa, thank you for bringing this word. Thank, thank you for you being for obedient me. and you. listening at full something in the morning and not rolling over, you know, when you could <laughs> have. <laughs> Girl, you know, you know, you be walking to you be like, and then he'll be like, knock, knock, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm Remember still you said here. you needed a word. Now, you didn't say what time the word was going to come. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Where can we find? Tell us what's next for you, your next project. You got, I know you got events that you're planning. Your yes, book I do. I was actually, Where can we find you? I was just talking to Keisha because I know that you all are out of state, but I was telling her that I have my book launched this Saturday, so I'm super duper happy. Yes. Um, yes, and so it's called the um, it's called the Cry Now Laugh Later. Thank you so much, Faith. It's called the Cry Now Laugh Later Tour, and I called it that because I I believe that you may cry about it now, but you're gonna laugh about that crap later, right? And that <laughs> yes, Cry Now Laugh Later Tour because and so I have a comedian coming in. And, you know, sometimes things are just so deep, you know, they're just so deep and we just all hurt and everything. And we, you know, we carrying this heavy stuff, but mm -hmm. I want, I want to make this load lighter for us. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I want us to be able to be like, girl, you know, we tell our testimony, girl, I did, or I said, you know, and that's the first step of healing. You know, when you talk to people and they say they healed and they still looking like this, but I'm healed. I am healed. Yes. I did. But it, no. <laughs> I know. That don't look him. <laughs> I don't know I don't what that know. is. That ain't him. That don't look like 
you forgave him at all. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I'm like, you know, we really got to laugh. You know, God is so funny. You know, he really is. And um, sometimes I even talk to God. I be like, you know, when I see you, you know, we're going to laugh about this for real because you <laughs> cracking me up right now. <laughs> and so I actually, you know, I want to come to different states, different cities or whatever. So, you know, if it's something that you all have, you know, jumping off, you know, just contact mm. me. And, you know, mm. My next project that I'm working on, I tell people I love Iyanla Von Zant. I think that she is like my auntie girl. I know I, I this, me, me and Yana, we friends. I don't care what this little lady said. We <laughs> <laughs> in my mind. In my, uh, in my mind. So okay. Um and so I wanted to I'm going to do um a project. She has Fix Your Life. I'm doing a project called Get Your Life. And I love it. So, yes. Yeah, so I'm going to talk to women men couples whomever and we're just gonna work through this thing because when i said that my motto is you know i came to set the people free i truly yes. love moses that is somebody that i pattern myself after um I, although i tell people i'm gonna make it to the promised land i don't care what hey man i'm <laughs> so that's right girl y'all ain't gonna keep driving me crazy i'm gonna make it to the promised land but no i i come to set in Jesus name and I really want us to be free from our mind um, things that happened to us in our childhood how we was raised how mama raised us and you yeah. know this cycle of generational curses and then yes doing it to our children and it's just perpetuating cycles and cycles and cycles over and over again and so um that's what the show is going to be about so that's my next thing that I'm working on and then I have another book coming out that um so i'm trying to get this book off oh my god love that's another thing that god does he'll download something else in you while you still working on this right so that's yes. why you work and you gotta rest yes to him yes. okay you know yes. and, and it goes back to what you were saying you know i think about adam and eve and i'm like man when they were resting with god they were king and queen they didn't work they didn't have anything but once they stopped resting yeah they toiled he said your, your days are going to be hard and your labor going to be mm -hmm. painful and all of this mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so it's like we to get back there mm -hmm. now he gave me another book you know another. and so you know i just want to mm -hmm. encourage the ladies that when mm -hmm. you are walking in your purpose when you ask god okay god what is my purpose what is it that you want me to do when you yep. when he tells you for real and you start walking in it it's gonna come it and sure it is what you love and it's yes. going to be your passion and you're yes. not going to be all upset and frustrated and everything you know what i'm saying you're going to actually really love it you're going to love it so much you're going to be like this don't even feel like i did anything today i can't believe yeah. i just wrote books today i don't even know what <laughs> you know what i'm saying like yeah yeah you don't feel like because you've been so used to toiling and working you know for somebody else or doing something you're gonna be like oh my god I really worked today and I made money and it don't even feel like I did it, you know? So yep. that's where God, you know, is really taking us. You know, like you might just take trips to Dubai. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Living up, riding on camels and stuff, you know? D ain't got no job. I don't care what nobody say. She ain't working for nobody. <laughs> this girl taking trips with her job, okay? She ain't working for nobody. That's that's rest. That's what rest look like. When you jump hey, man, girl. Come on. Rest. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, yes. She know what the rest is, honey. <laughs> yes. Yes, so, yes, so, yes. Those, those are the things that's going on. And then we're doing some things with the wives. You know, we're, we're still working on, you know, pitching everything and you know, it's stuff together. And we also have some events going on with the wives. We're doing some, um, why, yes, the wives hive. Yep, you can go and follow us in the group. And, and we're doing some events for our wives in waiting. Um, we just released our podcast. Awesome. Um, we're gonna, yeah, we're doing a podcast March 6th. It's going to run for eight weeks. So we'll be posting that in the group. Um, and... 
Oh, thanks. Awesome. Congratulations. She said she's getting married in September. Oh, you got to join the group, girl. That's she says, so guess what group I'm about to look up? Yes, yes look them the up. Right yes. Now, girl, yes, girl. Yes. Get in the yes. group right now. Yes, I would love That's to awesome. see their faith. And Keisha, you come too, because it's for wives and wives in waiting. Yes. I love it. It's an amazing group, y'all. Um, an amazing group. <laughs> join it. And Delisa, um, how can we follow you on social networks. Oh, great. Any... Yes, yes, yes. So everything is Delisa New Williams. You can follow me um, on Facebook, Delisa New Williams. My Instagram is Delisa New Williams. My website is www.delisa New Williams. And um, my Twitter is Delisa New Williams. And the name of the group um, for her, the Facebook group is called The Wives High. The Wives High. Mm -hmm. And I'm putting it in there so you can see that. Yay. Yes. Yay. Yes. 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 I can't wait to come to Chicago. My sister lives in Chicago. I, I think know. I shared you that with you. you so me. I can't wait to come and I have got to meet you there all she in go. person. I see Cook. She just asked to join the Wives High. Girl, I'm about to Yay. <laughs> All right. Yes. Honey. You are there. Love it. Love it. Love it. And girl, they got Freaky Fridays. Just letting y'all know. <laughs> My name. <laughs> hey, you don't have to say that for September. Just, just print yours yeah. out. Have your book ready. <laughs> you have your book ready on Fridays. <laughs> I know that's right. I, I tell you. That the relations belong to the Lord. I'm trying to tell you, He's the God. I know of that's right. Oh, I know God that's there. right. But thank you so much. I truly have enjoyed myself. Like seriously, thank you so so. Oh, so much you life. are so thank so welcome. You. No, thank you. We wanted to tell you just again, ladies, give her a round of applause in the oh, virtual chat room, and you. just thank you so much. For just again spending time with us and really bringing it to us because I, I really believe that again I think I'm not leaving here the same way I came I came to get something and I got it and so hey, thank you for taking over I really appreciate you and I'm gonna send this link out ladies so um, I will post this in the swag Facebook group so if you would like yes. to share this with somebody who didn't get to see it please feel feel, feel free to share it all right well, this has been a fantastic takeover Yay. with Mrs. Delisa New Williams. Congratulations, sweetheart, Thank on you. your pregnancy, all of your success with your book and your event. And I know it is going to be phenomenal. I'll be cheering you on um, March 3rd and thinking about everything that you're going to be doing. So, yes, girl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love you. You are so love welcome. You, love you too. <laughs> Bye, ladies. And we Bye. will see you soon. Goodbye.